the original DJI Mavic Air, my favorite drone. I've never considered upgrading throughout all of the latest releases simply because I don't need another drone. Um, but there is a sort of annoying little thing where you do have to calibrate the compass of this drone more often than other sorts of drones. Now, that has happened to me when I've changed location, I've gone up in altitude, uh, I've taken off near metallic objects, or I've turned the drone on inside the car. All of these things are really sort of what I think are triggers for having to recalibrate the compass of this drone. And I'm also in this video going to tackle a little bit of a kind of uh, misinformation out there about the fact that DJI put two compasses in this drone, which is kind of true and kind of not true. So let's talk about those. This video is based on an article on droneflyingpro.com. So go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. And if this video is useful, to you, please give it a thumbs up. The article that I've linked below has got plenty more information for you to delve into to really find out why your Mavic Air needs calibrating every single time, and we'll go through the most important ones now. Let's tackle the myth of two compasses. So there is only one compass in here, like a hardware compass, but um, to improve the safety and security of the drones, DJI introduced a vision compass to the DJI Mavic Air. Now what that means is that if the compass is, is experiencing some issues, um, it will use its vision, so its camera, to kind of work out where it is, which direction it's traveling, and the two together will help help it kind of uh, be more safe and secure as you're flying back or it's doing some of the automated features like the droney or going through waypoints, um, that sort of stuff. So yes, uh, it does have two compasses, but only one hardware compass. The other one is a vision sensor. Now, I always wonder, why did they do that on this drone? Was it that they were testing it and they were like, oh, the compass is in a weird spot on the frame and it's causing all this uh, error sort of uh, recalibration issue? Or is it uh, is it just a fluke that for some reason they put it in this uh, drone and now we're seeing loads of people say, well, we need to recalibrate it every single time. So yes, it is my experience that I need to recalibrate this drone pretty much every time. And you do that silly dance where you walk around, keeping the drone stationary, then you point it down and do the same thing. It just takes like a few seconds. But the thing about this drone is it does have a very limited battery life. DJI says it should achieve about 20 minutes. I've only really ever got about 15 to 17 minutes out of this drone um, and, uh, uh, quite often I land, you know, within about 10 minutes. So it is a relatively short battery cycle, which means that when you are uh, doing all of the weird compass calibration dances, you can actually just be like, come on, because you just want to get this into the air as soon as possible, because every minute counts with this drone. So I've taken my drone on an entire tour of Outback New South Wales. It was fantastic. I did it over the summer and uh, it, I went to um, Mutawinji, uh, which was incredible. I went to the Warren Bungles and a whole range of other places. And one thing I found is that when I moved, I had to recalibrate. Like every time I did a significant distance in the car, you know, I was covering maybe 100 to 500 kilometers a day in the car. Um, and I just found that as soon as I turned this on, I had to go and uh, recalibrate it. And you know, that was a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. And so yes, location is a huge thing. And I think even when I've traveled from my home to about sort of 20 kilometers away, that seems to be the sort of cutoff point for me. I, I don't know whether it's confirmation bias, I've never tracked the numbers, but as soon as I start kind of pass that 20 kilometer mark, that's when the drone says, okay, it's time to recalibrate. I have no idea where, where I am. Um, but there are also some other factors that I think are more important. So being near metal objects when you first turn on the drone is a sort of big determinant of whether or not you get some form of warning. So normally the drone will tell you if you're near a metallic object, and it will say move away and recalibrate the compass. But sometimes uh, the overhead wires, um, a really noisy kind of electrically noisy urban environment can cause you to have to recalibrate the compass as well. So it is a thing that happens time and time again with the DJI Mavic Air and uh, you know, to be honest, with you it's just something that I've put up with but definitely as soon as I sort of look at a takeoff spot I go okay is there metallic things and one of the biggest things that I found is that a lot of 
um, reinforced concrete has like metal in the middle. And I always forget about that. So I was down south, I was flying my drone and I realized that there was this nice open flat bit of concrete and I was like, I'm gonna fly it on that. But of course it had reinforcement in it because it was a latch to somewhere, a hatch to somewhere else. And so yes, I uh, got the warning and then I couldn't take off on this sort of like awesomely flat concrete area that I was like, it's perfect. It's away from everyone. It's exactly where I wanna take off. But unfortunately it did have issues and I just moved away. Actually, I think I moved onto the street. I had my girlfriend spotting for me, uh, moved out onto the street, took off and flew over that spot. So uh, yeah, what can you do? So metallic objects seem to be a huge determiner of whether or not you need to calibrate your compass and I just simply move away from them and I don't turn my drone on in the car either. Like I move away from all metallic objects. Magnets is another big thing. So on the forums, they were saying that smart watches, phones, all of those things, if you put your magnet too close to the compass, clearly you're gonna have issues. And so some people have found that if they've got a really fancy watch, um, they do take it off off while turning on the drone, placing it down, that sort of stuff. Now, I don't wear a watch um, and I've never been able to confirm that, but uh, some of my phone cases have had magnets in it and I'm not sure whether or not, you know, having your your magnet in your phone case too close to the drone can interfere with the compass, but certainly it kind of makes sense, right? It's a little bit of uh, common sense where any magnet should be kept away. If you've got a smart watch, uh, that can be a, a source of magnet uh, radiation. So um, yeah, just move that away and I think you'll be fine. Lastly, I think that altitude is a big thing. So uh, during my walks around New South Wales, I was going up a lot of places um, and I did, you know, these uh, massive six hour hikes and I was going up. And as soon as I went up, I found that I also had to recalibrate the compass. So I do think that altitude plays a very important role as well. So I got some amazing shots on a number of different peaks um, in the Warren Bungles in particular. And, uh, you know, I was really pleased with them. But of course, once again, as soon as you turn that drone on, it was just rocks nearby, there was nothing else but I got the dreaded message, you have to recalibrate the compass, can't take off, and yeah, that's what it is. I also went to Lord Howe Island, um, and uh, I did a few walks there, and Lord Howe Island is a fantastic place, it's so beautiful, um, perfect place for taking, uh, for drones, you have to sort of unlock your drone, you can do self-unlocking for three days, but uh, as soon as you do that, it's incredible. So, um, uh, but the problem was, is Lord Howe Island doesn't have phone reception, so I couldn't do it with my phone, I had to get them to call in a code. Oh, it was a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, um, altitude seems to play an important role in the compass era as well. That's just my experience. Ultimately, I think that the DJI thing, you know, just do what it says get through the errors. It is a quirk of this drone. I don't think there's any getting around it. Now, I don't know whether it's because of the position of the compass in the drone body. I don't know whether it's because um, of some other interference, electrical interference as it's operating. You know, it's a relatively small drone compared to other ones. Um, it, it folds down to in a small size. So um, yeah, you know, the DJI Mavic Air it is just a quirk of usage. And uh, one thing I do is just make sure that I go through all of the prompts, I do what it says, and then, uh, you know, ultimately you're sending this up into the sky and you want it to return safely. So it is a quirk and uh, it is part of just um, dealing with it. But I still think that the DJI Mavic Air is one of the best drones ever. And go check out my other video where I talk about why. It's just powerful, it's compact, it's a daily carry drone for me. And uh, I just, you know, love it. I love that I can just carry it around. It's not too heavy. Whereas even the DJI Mavic Air 2 that's bigger than this, I saw it in the shop and I looked at it. I was like, I wouldn't carry that every single day. And then the one under the mini um, just is a little bit more of a toy. The mini 2 is uh, really good, but I wouldn't trust it like sending it out over cliffs or over strong winds like I've done with this. You know, I, I sent this out over cliffs or dolphins. It was incredible. So uh, yeah, DJI Mavic Air, still one of the best drones DJI has made, but obviously it's got its little quirks. So there we have it. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that list. Why is your DJI Mavic Air or DJI drone asking you to uh, recalibrate the compass all the times? Let's share that information and I shall see you in the next video.